If you find it confusing that there are three main variants of the minor scale, then this video is for you. Maybe you can never remember which is which, or maybe you don't understand the point of learning all three of them, but today we are going to break through all of that confusion and you will learn what the diatonic chords are of each of these different scales, why we need to know all three of them, and how we can actually use them in our playing. So why are there three variants of the minor scale? Well, we have to remember that a scale is just a melody. It's a series of notes that has a particular sound, and over time, composers and musicians have changed certain notes in the minor scale to achieve a specific sound they're looking for. By changing certain notes in the minor scale, we change the color and the style and the sound of the scale. The natural minor scale is sort of like our default minor scale. Now, I'm not saying it's the most important or the most commonly used minor scale. I'm just saying that you can think of it as our default minor scale. So first let's look at how the natural minor scale differs from the harmonic minor scale. So here's a C natural minor scale and a C harmonic minor scale, and if we were to analyze the notes in them, the only note that's different between them, do you see, is uh, this note right here, B flat or B natural. Other than that, all of the notes are the same. And we say that the harmonic minor scale has a raised seventh degree when compared to the natural minor scale, which just means that the seventh note has been raised up by one half step, going from the note B flat to the note B natural. So first let's talk about why people might have begun playing the harmonic minor scale instead of the natural minor scale. But first we need to talk about something called the leading tone. Let me play a C major scale for you, and I'm going to stop at the seventh note, okay? This is just a C major scale. Can't you feel how badly you want the scale to resolve back to the C at the top? There's just so much tension uh, when we linger on that note B, because when our ears, or rather our brains, hear that leading tone note, which is the seventh degree, we feel a very strong desire for the note to resolve back to the tonic, which is C. It's really leading us back to that tonic, or root note, right? Which is why we call this note a leading tone. And leading tones are always one half step higher or lower than whichever note they're leading us to. And do you see how this note B is just a half step away from the note it's leading us to, which is the note C? So see they're one half step apart. And that's why the seventh degree of a major scale is referred to as a leading tone. So in a major scale, we have this nice leading tone seventh degree, right? That B note is leading us to C because it's one half step away from C. Now, let's look at the natural minor scale on the piano, okay? So I'm gonna play a C natural minor scale, so we have C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. Now, is the seventh degree still a leading tone? Well, what's the seventh degree in this scale? It's B flat, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? B flat is our seventh degree. And is B flat a half step away from the tonic, which is C? No, it's not. You see how there's a note in between them, this note B natural? So that means that the seventh degree is not a leading tone because it has to be a half step away from the note it's leading to in order for it to be a leading tone. People missed hearing that leading tone note in a natural minor scale, so they began raising the seventh degree of the scale, which just means they're moving it up one half step, which then created the harmonic minor scale, which sounds like this. C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B, C. So you could think of the harmonic minor scale as being just like the natural minor scale, but with a leading tone seventh degree. So we just take that seventh degree of the natural minor scale and saying, ah, oh, I wish this could be a nice leading tone. Then we're just gonna shift up a half step and voila. Now, that's one reason why someone might prefer using the harmonic minor scale over the natural minor scale. But there's another big reason, and that is because of the diatonic chords it creates. Okay, so first let's quickly discuss what are diatonic chords. You can think of diatonic chords as being a close family of chords that are connected to a certain key. So if you're playing a song in a certain key, there's a good chance you will hear some of those diatonic chords that are connected with that key in the song. Will you hear other chords? Most likely, yes. The same way you don't just talk to your family members all the time, you also probably socialize with coworkers and friends. And it's the same way with diatonic chords. The diatonic chords of a key 
are just like the close family member chords of the key. So a song will most likely include some diatonic chords from its key, but it will also use some other chords from other keys too. And each diatonic chord has an important role it plays, harmonically speaking, within the key. For example, the root chord of a key has a pretty important role, I'd say. What I mean by that is, if we were in the key of A major, the chord of A major is one of the diatonic chords of the key of A, and it happens to be the root chord of the key. Make sense? You know, A major chord is the root chord of the key of A major. Nothing too crazy going on here yet. So the root chord is one of the diatonic chords of the key. So let's talk about its role or job position. Because remember how I said every diatonic chord has a specific job or role that it plays within the key? So what does the root chord do? Well, it's the center of gravity for the key. Everything we hear in that key is ultimately leading us back to that chord. It's like the home base. You know, when we hear that root chord, we feel a sense of resolution and home. And no matter what key you're in, the root chord will be doing that job. Another really important diatonic chord is the chord we get from the fifth degree of the scale, which we refer to as the dominant. The same way people refer to the first degree as the root or tonic, we also refer to the fifth degree as the dominant. So why is the dominant so special? Well, it has a very powerful pull back to the tonic. When you hear that dominant chord, you really want to hear it resolve to the tonic or root. Um, and that relationship between the tonic and dominant is so important that it's arguably the most important harmonic relationship in all of music. That connection between the one and the five, the root and the dominant. So the job of the dominant is to lead us back to the root. For example, in the key of C major, G is the dominant, right? And when you hear it, you feel a really strong pull back to the root of C, right? You can hear it with the chords too. For instance, if I play a G major chord, it really wants to resolve back to the chord C major, right? There's tension, it feels like unresolved, and then it really is leading us back home to that root or tonic. Now, diatonic chords are made up entirely of notes in the scale that it's connected to. To show you this, let's figure out the notes in each diatonic chord in the C natural minor scale, okay? So let's just look at the C natural minor scale, okay? So here's our C natural minor scale, and we're going to turn every single note in this scale into a chord, okay? So our first chord is going to start with the note C, okay? Because each note is going to turn into its own chord. So this, this chord is going to start with the note C, this one is going to start with the note D. And then that's all we need to do, because we just repeat. We, we already did C. So these are the root notes of each of the diatonic chords, but what are the rest of the notes in these chords? Well, we just move up the scale in thirds to create the chord. And what does that mean? Let me just show you, because I think it's easier just to show you. So this first chord, we're no we know it's starting on the note C, right? Then we move up a third in the scale, and if we move up a third from C, we get to the note E flat. So that means E flat is the second note in this chord, okay? So I'm gonna write C, and then I'll do E flat, okay? Then we move up another third from E flat, and we get to the note G. So that means G is the third note in this chord, okay? So we have C, E flat, and G, like that. And voila, we have figured out the notes in the first diatonic chord in this C natural minor scale. Okay, and what chord is this? When I play those three notes together, C, E flat, and G, what chord am I playing? I'm playing a C minor triad chord. So I'm just gonna write a C minor here underneath because that is our first diatonic chord, okay? And the little lowercase m is a shorthand for minor. As you can see, when I say moving up in thirds in the scale, um, it just really, you could, th if you want to really simplify it, it just means you're hopping over one note in the scale to get to the next one. So you're sort of choosing every other note in the scale, starting from whichever one you're starting from. So let, let me show you. So let's do the next chord. So we know this next chord starts on the note D, right? So, and to find the next note, in the chord, we're gonna just move up a third, or we could think of it as just, just hopping over the next note. Um, and so if we do that, which note do we get to? So we go from D, we hop over the next note, and we land on 
F, right? So F is the next note in the chord. So we have D, and we have F, and then we have one other note. So after F, we skip over the next note, right? We're gonna hop again, woo, like a bunny rabbit, and land on A flat, right? So A flat is the next note in the chord. So we have D, F, and A flat, all right? So um, that's what I mean by moving up in thirds. So what chord is this? When I play D, F, and A flat together, D, F, and A flat, what chord is that? That's a D diminished chord, okay? So that means D diminished is our second diatonic chord in the C natural minor scale, okay? So right, D diminished, and that little circle is a shorthand symbol for diminished, okay? Okay, so what about the third chord? I think you're maybe starting to get the hang of this a little bit, right? So we're just gonna start on E flat, right? And we hop over the next note, so E flat, we move up a third, we get to the note G, right? So next note is G. Then after G, we hop over another note, we get to B flat, right? So we have E flat, G, and B flat. And what chord is that? When we play E flat, G, B flat, so E flat, G, B flat, that's an E flat major chord, okay? So this is E flat. That is our third diatonic chord in a C natural minor scale, okay? What about the fourth chord now, okay? We have F, then we skip over one, we get to A flat, right? F, A flat, and we have one other. Okay, after A flat, we jump again, we get to C. All right, what chord is that? When we play F, A flat, and C, here's F, A flat, C. That is F minor, okay? Again, I'm just gonna do a little lowercase m for minor. So that's our fourth diatonic chord is F minor. All right, what about the fifth one? Starting on G, right? We've got G, we move up a third, or we just hop over, we get to B flat, right? Okay, and hey, what about this next one? Like, the scale ended, right? So where do I go? Well, you just pretend like you're back at the beginning again. So if I were on B flat and I hopped over the note C, here's my C again, I would land on D, right? Because this is redundant. We don't actually need to write this last C, right? So after uh, B flat, I jump over the C and I get to D. So we've got G, B flat, and D. And what chord is that when I play G, B flat, and D? G, B flat, D, it's a G minor chord, right? So I'm gonna write G minor. All right, that was our fifth chord. What about the sixth chord? We've got A flat, right? Then after A flat, we skip over B flat and we land on C, right? Because after the B flat was C, right? So we have A flat, C, and then skip over again, we get to E flat, right? So just moving up in thirds. And what chord is this? A flat, C, and E flat. When I play those three notes together, what chord am I playing? A flat, C, E flat. That's an A flat major chord. So, all right, A flat, okay. And last but not least, the seventh chord. I've got a B flat, right? And then after, if I skip over the next note, I land on B flat, you can imagine it being here. Get to D, right? And after D, I skip over another and I get to F. And what chord is this? B flat, D, and F, ready? B flat, D, F, that is B flat major. So, B flat major. So these chords, C minor, D diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, and B flat major, are the diatonic chords of C natural minor. So these are like the close family of chords that are connected to the C natural minor scale, okay? Now, do you remember before when I was talking about the root and the dominant chord and I was saying that the G chord really has a strong pull to the note C? And I told you that relationship between the root and the dominant was probably the most important relationship in all of music. Well, now that we're looking at a C natural minor scale, let's say, we were writing a melody with these notes in the scale, and we want to end the song on the note C. So key of C minor, and I want to end the song on the note C, okay? I could play the dominant chord uh, in C natural minor, and the fifth, 
fifth chord in C natural minor is G minor, right? So let's listen to what that sounds like, having G minor lead us back to the tonics. So I've got G minor leading us to C minor. And that sounds good. That dominant does lead us back home in a very minor way back to the home chord or note of C, right? But let's listen if we had that G major chord instead of the G minor chord, and let's see how that sounds. So we've got, instead of G minor, we would have G major leading us to C minor. Ah, and that has a pretty strong pull too. And one of the reasons why that G major chord sounds so good leading us back home to the root is because uh, we have that leading tone note in the chord of G major, for instance. Look, here's uh, my G major chord. I know it's in second inversion, right? But I'm just putting in second inversion so you can see how close it is to the note we're going to. See how this note B is just one half step away from the tonic where we're trying to get to? That's one reason why we have such a strong pull with this chord G major. To from G major to C minor, right? So it doesn't matter if we're going from G major to C major or G major to C minor. We still, if we're going from G major, we still have that leading tone note in the chord. That E is very close to the note C, right? But if I were playing G minor instead, right? And then I wanted to resolve it to C minor. Ah, now I don't have that leading tone note anymore, right? That's close to the tonic, right? Now I have a B flat instead of a B. It's a whole step away from C, this, the root, which is C, the tonic, okay? So G minor to C minor. It sounds nice, but we don't have that nice leading tone note pulling us uh, to the tonic. So it's not quite as strong of a dominant chord. So if I were playing a song in the key of C minor and I wanted to have a G major chord as one of my diatonic chords, I would need to change some of the notes or one of the notes in this natural minor scale to get that G major chord, right? Because right now I have a G minor chord and I need a G major chord. And as you can see, these diatonic chords, all the notes in these chords are made up completely of the notes that are in the scale. So if I wanted the chord G major instead of G minor as my fifth diatonic chord, the dominant chord, which note in the scale would I need to change to get a G major chord instead of a G minor chord? I would need to change the middle note, B flat, middle note in that chord, to a B natural, right? Then it would be G, B, and D, and that would be a G major chord. But wait a second, that means I would have to change the note in the scale from B flat to B natural too, right? In order for that to be one of the diatonic chords. And hey, wait a second, if I turn that B flat into a B natural, then this scale goes from being the C natural minor scale to the C harmonic minor scale. See? Check it out. See, when I turn this B flat into a B natural, now I've got the C harmonic minor scale. So wait, let's figure out the diatonic chords in the C harmonic minor scale, okay? So we're gonna do it the exact same way we did the natural minor chords. So we're just gonna move up in thirds, which means, you know, with this chord, the notes, so the first note is gonna be C. So we skip over one and we get to E flat, right? So C, E flat, and then after E flat, we skip another one and we get to G, right? And what chord is that? C, E flat, and G? That's C minor. So that's the same diatonic chord as the natural minor scale, right? That one didn't change at all. All right, what about the second chord, okay? So second chord, we start with D, and then we move up a third, and we get to F, right? Then we move up another third from F, we get to A flat. And what chord is that? D, F, A flat. That is D diminished, right? Same as before. All right, what about the next one? We have E flat is the first note, right? E flat, then we have, after E flat, we're gonna move up a third, so we just jump over the note, we get to G, right? Then after G, we move over another, up another third, we get to B, right? E flat, G, and B. All right, so what chord is this? This one is actually different than uh, in the natural minor scale. So if we have E flat, G, and B, that is an E flat augmented chord. So E flat augmented, and that little plus symbol is a shorthand for augmented. Okay, then the next one we have starting out with F, then after F we move up a third, we get to a flat, right? Then after A flat, we move up another, we jump over B, we get to, what's the note here? C, right? So F, A flat, and C. What chord is that? That's F minor. Same as up there. 
All right, this next one we have G, right? And then after G, we move up a third, we get to B, natural. And then after B, we jump again, we get to D, right? And that is a G major chord. So that one is different. Then the next one, we have A flat, right? Then after A flat, we skip over this note B, we get to C, right? After C, we jump over, we get to E flat. Okay, A flat, C, and E flat, what is that? That is A flat major. Alright, and last but not least, we have a B, natural, we're starting on. We skip over the next note in the scale, which is C, and we get to the note D. So B, D, and after D, we move up another third, we get to F. And B, D, F, what chord is that? Mm, let's listen to it. So we have B, D, and F. That's a different one. This is B diminished. So B diminished. Again, I'm going to do a little circle shorthand. And hey, these are our diatonic chords in the C harmonic minor scale. We have C minor, D diminished, then E flat augmented, F minor, G major, A flat major, and B diminished. So which are the ones that are different from the natural minor scale? This third one, right, we had an E flat major, now we have an E flat augmented. This fifth one, right, we had a G minor, now we have a G major. And then the seventh one, we had a B flat major, and now we have a B diminished. So hey, check it out, we have different diatonic chords depending on whether we are using the natural minor scale or the harmonic minor scale. So some of them are the same, but some of them are different, right? So this is a big reason why someone might want to use the C harmonic minor scale instead of the C natural minor scale in a song because they get different chords from the scale. And that G major chord can be really powerful when leading to the note C. Now this brings us to the melodic minor scale because Melodic minor scale has its own set of diatonic chords. So let's just look at those quickly. So first let's write out a C melodic minor scale. So let's figure out the diatonic chords of C melodic minor, because here's my C melodic minor scale. Okay, so, um, and you see, what's the difference between C melodic minor and these other two? Harmonic minor has just a raised seventh and melodic minor has a raised sixth and a raised seventh when we're comparing them to the natural minor scale. Okay, so. Let's figure out the diatonic chords. So this first one starts with C, move up a third, we get to E flat, right? C, E flat, then after E flat, we get to G. All right, what chord is that? That's C minor. Same as the other guys. All right, next one starts on D. Then we have D, after D we have F. Then after F we have A. All right, what chord is that? D, F, and A. D, F, A, it's a D minor chord. So, got D minor, this one is different. Because before we had D diminished, now we have a D minor chord. All right, next chord, we have E flat, right? Then what, what happens after E flat? E flat, then we have G. Then we are, after G, we have B. E flat, G, and B, what is that? That is an E flat augmented chord, so same as in the harmonic minor scale, same chord. All right, next chord, we've got F. After F, we move up to A. Then after A, we move up to C. So this is an F major chord. This one's different, right? Before we had F minor, now we have F major. See, F, A, C, F major chord. All right, what about the fifth chord? So we start with a G. After G, we get to B, right? And after B, we get to, we skip over the C, and we land on the D, right? And this is, what chord is that? That's a G major chord. Same as in uh, the harmonic minor scale, right? And this one is going to start on A, so this one is definitely going to be different. So after A, we skip over B and we land on C, right? After C, we jump again and we get to E flat. A, C, E flat. What chord is that? Let's listen. That is an A diminished chord. And last but not least, we have B, after B, D, after D, F, that is a B diminished chord. Same as in the harmonic minor. So if you look at the diatonic chords of the melodic minor scale, you can see that we also have that G major dominant chord, right? The same one that we had in the harmonic minor scale as well. So someone might want to use a melodic minor scale um, to use some of the chords that are part of this scale.
But let's also talk about why people might have begun to play the C melodic minor scale from a melodic standpoint. So let's go back really quickly and think about our harmonic minor scale again, okay? So some composers uh, might have found the gap between the sixth and seventh degrees in the harmonic minor scale, which are between the notes A flat and B, um, to be a little awkwardly large. So remember the harmonic minor scale sounds like this. And that large interval uh, between the notes A flat and B, uh, which is an augmented second, um, it's quite a big distance. And, you know, of course, many composers have used this augmented second interval in the harmonic minor scale in their compositions and enjoyed it, obviously. But others, I think, wanted to maybe eliminate that large gap because they found it difficult to navigate, especially with vocal music and writing nice melody lines. So um, the only way you could eliminate this large gap, and I'll, let's listen to it just one more time so you can hear it, so. There's that large augmented second interval, and then back to the root again. So the only way we could make this distance between the sixth and the seventh note, or this interval smaller, is by lowering the seventh and if you do that, then you're just going to be back at the natural minor scale, right? If I lowered the seventh, I would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, right? That's the natural minor scale. So that's one way I could make that interval distance smaller. But another way we could make this interval distance smaller between the sixth and seventh degree uh, is by raising the sixth degree as well. So this A flat turns into A natural. And check it out, that is the melodic minor scale. So C, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C. So the melodic minor scale has a raised sixth and seventh note, um, and we get both the leading tone, note of B natural, which leads us back to C, and we've eliminated the large augmented second interval by also raising the sixth degree from A flat to A. Does that make sense? I hope so. If you're still confused by that, let me know in a comment below and I'll try to make another video that elaborates on this a little further. But let's go back to the diatonic chords now. So as you can see, the diatonic chords of a minor key are a little bit more complicated than a major key, right? Because for a major key, we just have seven diatonic chords. But when we talk about the diatonic chords of a minor key, we suddenly have way more, right? We actually have a total of, well, you can try counting if you want, but uh, it's a total of 13 different diatonic triads in a minor key. For instance, if I'm playing a song in the key of C minor, just, just regular old C minor key, there are 13 different diatonic triads I could use. By the way, a triad is just a chord with three notes. We also have diatonic seventh chords, but I'm not going to get into that in this video because otherwise this video will go on forever and I will cover them in another video. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment and share it with a friend. So if you are improvising or writing a melody over a chord progression and you come across a B diminished chord in the chord progression, um, here's a B diminished chord, right? We also have one in the harmonic minor scale, but we're just gonna focus on this one right now that's in the melodic minor scale. Um, you could say, hey, that B diminished chord is a diatonic chord of C melodic minor. Therefore, I could play the notes in the C melodic minor scale over that chord and it could sound nice. So let's listen to what the C melodic minor scale sounds like while I'm holding a B diminished chord. Now let's hear what a C harmonic minor scale sounds like over a B diminished chord, because as I said earlier, the B diminished chord is also a diatonic chord for C harmonic minor. right? Now let's listen to a C natural minor scale over a B diminished chord. So a lot of those notes in the C natural minor scale sounded pretty good over the B diminished chord, right? But we did have fewer note options that sounded good because we have different notes going on. For example, this note B flat in the scale clashes with the note B in our B diminished chord. Listen to it. See, here's my B diminished chord. It sounds kind of cool, but it's very dissonant. Let's look at another one. Let's listen to an F minor chord, okay? 
So here's my F minor chord. And if you see, we have an F minor chord in our natural minor scale and our harmonic minor scale, but not in the melodic minor scale. So first, let's listen to a natural minor scale, C natural minor scale over an F minor chord. So here's my F minor chord, and I'm gonna play a C natural minor scale first, okay? Options, right? A lot of those notes sounded very nice with that chord. Now let's do a harmonic minor scale with this F minor chord. A lot of good note options there too. All right, now I'm gonna play a melodic minor scale. This is one where it's not one of the diatonic chords of the scale, but let's see what it sounds like. Did sound good and why is that well because a lot of the notes are the same in these scales right there's only one note that's different right between these two scales we just have this a instead of the a flat but it's just good to remember that hey that note a won't sound quite as good over that f minor chord as the note a flat will right so you would want to play maybe one of these two scales over that chord instead or pick notes from those scales if you were writing or improvising. Now, does it mean you can never play the note um, A natural over an F minor chord? Absolutely not. You know, there's no, uh, when it comes to writing and improvising, as long as it sounds good, it sounds good. So, you know, all the rules, we can always throw them out the window, but we wanna have ideas about what will probably sound good that can help us. But you know, if you're playing an A natural note just as a passing tone really quickly, uh, then I'm sure it would sound really nice. You might not want to hang out on that note for a long time. You know, if I were playing, uh, right, here's my F minor chord. This really clashes to, to play that A natural note, right? I sounds better to play A flat, right? But if I was just running through it really quickly, it could sound cool. So I'm just, just play that A natural for just a second, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to hang out there for long. So, at the end of the day, no rules. As long as it sounds good, it sounds good. But we learn the rules just so we have good ideas and uh, good instincts about what to play. So basically, if you look at the diatonic chords of the three minor scales, then you can play each of these scales over all of the diatonic chords that are connected with them. For instance, you could play the notes in a C harmonic minor scale over any of these chords, and it will probably sound pretty nice. I'm actually going to make another video that goes more in depth on diatonic chords of minor scales, but for now I want to move on because there's one last thing I'd like to address in this video, and that is why does the melodic minor scale get played differently when it's ascending versus descending? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I actually made another video uh, that I will link in the description below that's sort of like an introduction to these three different uh, minor scales, and I go into more depth in that video. but. Basically, a melodic minor scale is only played with the raised 6th and 7th degrees when it is ascending. So when it's descending, it just turns back into the natural minor scale. For example, if I played a C melodic minor scale, both ascending and descending, it would sound like this. C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, and then if I'm descending, C, B flat, A flat, G, F, E flat, D, and C. So I played these notes when I was ascending, but when I was descending, I played those notes. I went back to the natural minor scale. So why? Well, when we play a scale descending, um, then the seventh degree is no longer resolving to the tonic, right? Check it out. I'm gonna play um, the C melodic minor scale ascending first, okay? So if I'm playing it ascending, then I play the B first, right, before resolving up to the C. So when I'm ascending, it makes sense to want to have that leading tone note to lead us up to C, right? But if I'm playing it descending, then I'm playing the C first and then I'm playing the B, it's no longer acting like a leading tone. So because we only need the leading tone when the scale is ascending, that's why when it's descending, it just goes back to the regular old natural minor scale because we no longer need this uh, leading tone because it doesn't matter going if I'm going down. All The leading tone only counts when you're leading from the leading tone to the tonic, right? So I'm... 
there's the leading tone pointing up to C. But if I'm going down, it doesn't matter. So I might as well just go back to the natural minor scale. Really, the main thing to remember is that we only have the raised sixth and seventh degrees when the scale is ascending, because that's when we would want the leading tone. And you might still be wondering, okay, I get that when we're descending, we don't need a leading tone, but why do we bother switching back to the natural minor scale? What's the point of it? Um, and well, as I said at the very beginning of this video, if you remember, scales are just melodies that people use to practice and they teach us uh, about harmonies and ways that melodies can act in certain keys uh, or harmonic conditions. And maybe people chose to start doing this because um, you know, if you're playing a song in a minor key, uh, you would be more inclined to play that note B natural when you're playing an ascending melody line if it's going up to the note. But when you're descending, it sounds better to use that A flat and B flat. Maybe that's why, because it shows us how notes typically or often behave uh, in minor keys. Um, that might be one reason. Another reason could be just people like the sound of it while they were playing it and practicing it. I've also been told, although I don't know that it's necessarily true, that um, people thought the melodic minor scale sounded too major. Right? There's only one note that's different from a major scale, and that's the E flat. So because it sounded too major, and also maybe because that raised sixth and seventh clashed with some harmonies, uh, people, to adjust for that, decided to just lower the sixth and seventh note whenever they were playing the scale descending, since they didn't need the leading tone. Um, you know, maybe that's why, who knows. But really the main thing to remember is that we only have the raised sixth and seventh degrees when the scale is ascending because that's when we would want the leading tone. So we learn all this stuff, but how do we actually really, really get it into our playing? And our goal is to make music here. So it's really nice to take these scales and to actually start making some music, writing some melodies, improvising, and having fun little exercises where we can just improvise in a very low stress way. So one of my favorite ways to go about doing this is uh, just using two chord vamps. So um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick two chords um, in any of these scales. And uh, for instance, we'll just pick the first two, uh, C minor and D diminished, okay? So we're gonna do a vamp between C minor and D diminished. And on the piano, I'm just gonna, with my left hand, play those two chords and just go back and forth playing them. And then with my right hand, I'm going to improvise uh, just notes in the C natural minor scale. And any and you can play nice and slow, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just play a simple little melody. Um, if you're playing guitar or ukulele, you can record yourself playing these two chords back and forth. You know, you can just make a little recording and then uh, just play on top of that, improvise scale notes while listening back to the recording. Um, but let me just show you what I mean. And this is, I think, a really great way to, to start actually practicing these scales and playing music, because that's what this is all about, right? take that exact same vamp, C minor and D diminished, and do it over the harmonic minor scale too, because see, we have those two diatonic chords in harmonic minor as well, okay? So I'm gonna be still vamping back and forth between C minor and D diminished, but this time I'm gonna play the C harmonic minor scale, notes from that scale instead of the natural minor scale, okay? So let's check it out. Okay, keep it slow and simple.
doesn't have to be anything profound. Just have fun and noodle around and just practice your skills this way. And just what, so you know, while you're playing and improvising like this, sometimes you might hit a wrong chord accidentally. You know, maybe you'll accidentally play C major or uh, D major instead of E minor. Um, and sometimes those are really cool actually. And so you'll realize that sometimes your mistakes sound really awesome and they can actually give you really good new ideas. Um, so that's sort of the fun of just rip doing these two chord vamps because they're so, it's nice and simple, it's manageable. And um, even when you make a mistake, you know, it sometimes sounds really refreshing because your ears start to get tired of hearing just those same two chords. So have fun with it. Discover new sounds. We're just trying to make beautiful music here at the end of the day, right? That's what all this is for. What's the point of learning skills unless we actually are going to make some nice music with it? So if you make a mistake and you discover a really cool sound, maybe you hit a note that actually wasn't in the scale, but it sounds awesome. Great. You know, you definitely can play many other notes over these two chords and just those, you know, these are just exercises. So um, keep your... Keep your ears open to those mistakes, embrace them, and have fun. That is the most important part, have fun. At the end of the day, scales are useful to us because sure, they help us with technique, um, but they also help us understand how to write and play beautiful melodies, chords, and harmonies. And we can adjust the notes in these scales to help us achieve the sounds we're looking for. The reason why you might practice playing these three different scales on your instrument is because it's teaching you the different ways melody notes behave in minor keys. So the melodic minor and harmonic minor scales are really just helpful tools that show us how the 6th and 7th scale degrees can be raised sometimes in minor keys when we find it helpful to have those notes. And knowing these three different scales separately helps us understand which notes to play over certain chords when we begin to analyze the diatonic chords of each minor scale. As I said earlier, I'll be making a video about diatonic chords of minor scales later down the road, so stay tuned for that. And when I do, I will try to remember to post a link to it in the description below here. If I forget to post the link in the description, comment and remind me, please. Um, and that is all for today. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you're new to my channel and you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that you actually will know when I post a new video. Um, I post a video once a week and I would love to have you here. And if you want to practice what we learned in this video, I have printable PDF practice materials as well as some video summaries and a link in the description below. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and a special big thank you to my Patreon supporters who make it possible for me to make these videos. That is all guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week and have a wonderful rest of your day or night.